welcome to Heirloom Ornaments. I'm Stacy, and today is Tea Tuesday, where we get together and we talk some tea and talk about our week and whatever it is we like to do. Uh, today I'm not drinking tea, I'm actually drinking coffee uh, in one of my favorite coffee to-go cups. Um, it's not wine. I wish it was this early, but it's not. Put that aside. Uh, on Tuesdays we get together and we just talk. It's a it's a collab hosted by Kathy from Kathy's Favorite Things and Patty from Life with Patty, uh, and we come together, we chit chat, and we talk about our week, uh, and we do whatever we like. Whether you like to to uh, tell stories, do a craft like I like to do, um, just talk about your shopping trips, whatever you like to do. So if you ever want to join us, just make a video hashtag it T Tuesday in your description. Let one of us know that you're uh, joining in and we'll all come see what you're talking about on a Tuesday. Today we're going to do watercolor, in case you haven't figured that out. And with watercolor, there are some little things you need to know before you start. But this is the easiest technique and painting I'm going to show you. Uh, I once read somewhere that if you want to do something very well, do the exact same thing every day for about 30 days. And then you'll get... It'll be just second nature. You'll have muscle memory and you'll just do it. But for watercolor, one thing, a couple things I want to point out is uh, use watercolor brushes. I will link these in the description, but this is my watercolor brush jar. And this sits totally different than, different place than all my other brushes. I don't use anything other than watercolor for these brushes. Kind of like when you're sewing and you only have scissors for material, the same idea. Use watercolor brushes. Um, if you want to, you can read up on a different types. I don't have a very expensive brand. I'm kind of new at this. I've only been doing this since COVID. During COVID is when everybody was learning something new. So I decided to teach myself something new, which was watercolor. The other thing you need to do is use watercolor paper. You can't use watercolor paints on regular paper. It'll just swap around. There's two types. There's cold press and there's hot press. I use the cold press. You can tell the difference because it's really bumpy hot press is flat and smooth like you pressed it with an iron um, but because this paper is rather expensive i cut up into little pieces as you could see all these little ones and i make little pictures i like to frame them up one year i framed it up for my mom for mother's day she absolutely loved it because uh, her little girl made it even though i'm 50 i'm still her little girl and for watercolors you don't have to buy a very expensive set i got this set uh, on Amazon, I'll link this one. And as you can see, I've been using it for a while. It came with some things that I don't really use, a watercolor pen, a liner brush, a little sponge, uh, and a um, sharpener. I don't, again, I don't use all this stuff. I do use a liner brush sometimes. But you can even start off with Crayola watercolor. Whatever you have, or even the stuff from the dollar store, just to practice and play with it. What I did was, and I want to show you how I changed. This was the very first time I ever did this flower. Look how bad that is. Uh, not bad. It's beautiful. I made it. I love it. Um, but what you want to, what I'm trying to say is it, it will change over time. So the more you practice, the more you get into it. And I just take pieces of paper and I just practice on here. The best thing you can do to get to used to watercolor is just putting drops on a paper. And the more drops you put on the paper, the, you'll get to see how it moves and how it flows around. Watercolor to me is very therapeutic. Uh, I have extremely high anxiety and sometimes it, it helps me to focus kind of like crochet when you're doing something and you put your focus into it it really does help so I want to show you how I make this super simple flower and it's um it's just basic techniques and you might have seen me do something similar before uh with acrylic on one of my ornaments I start with a bowl of very clean water and I'm going to pick two colors that are very similar or not similar. Uh, I like them to be similar and I'm going to make one lighter and one darker. So I'm going to take my lighter, my two colors. In this case, I'm going to take this peach and I'm just going to wet it. Now you can make little pools of water if I'm doing a different type of painting in a, a, in a palette with some extra water. That'll lighten the color, but I don't want to lighten this one. This is what I'm going to do for this technique instead. I'm going to get some color on my brush. I'm just going to use one of these. And I just put one, whoops, two, three dots. I mean, just put the bigger dot there. And then I get my water and I put it in the water and I'm just going to tap it across the side. 
just to get so it's not dripping, but I do want it wet. And then I take those three dots. Let me get this out of your way so you can see better. And I just take it, the water, and I wiggle it down, maybe two. And then I go over here, and this is your paper. Spin it around if you want. One, two. And then one, two. And I see where I want to put two more dots, or one more dot, or three more dots, or whatever you want, or no more dots. This looks a little empty here. I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one over here. And now I go back to my water, drag it across the side. One, two, and over here, one, two. And you don't even have to do strokes. You could do like big bubbles. Now, what you want to do is go to the darker color. I'm going to pick this nice dark one here. While it's still wet, while it's still wet, you want to get some and you just want to touch it. See how it just spreads on its own? Touch it, touch it, touch it and touch it. And that, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna go wash off my brush because I wanna go back into, and I wanna make another one. I'm gonna make another one right next to it. One, two, three. Get my water, drag the side. One, two, spin it around. One, two, one, two. I think I'm only gonna do one more on this one. He looks kind of cute. One, two. I think I'm gonna make me a little bud too. To make a bud, I just get a little extra water and not make it so uh, so solid. And I'm just gonna make little two crushes to come together. And that's all I'm gonna do for my bud. And while this is still wet, let's real fast while it's still wet. Tap, 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 tap. I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom here too. I want it to go up the sides a little. And I'm done with that for now. And then with my liner brush, this is a number two. This one was a number eight. I'm gonna get some of that color just a little bit just so it's on there. And this is where I'm gonna shape it if you want to. You go around the sides, kind of define it a little, push it around. Watercolor really is just pushing it around. And you don't even have to do anything with this one, really. You could just let it, the water take care of itself. Actually, I kind of like the way they, this one's flowing on its own. I'm going to leave that one alone. Actually, I'm going to leave them all alone. They look pretty good. And then this one, the bud, they tend to be a little darker because they haven't really bloomed out and got a lot of sun yet. So I'm just going to put a little bit of extra darkness on the bottom of this and kind of out the side just so that it looks like it's in bloom still. And now with my liner brush, I want to get some greenery going on. So I'm going to go to this dark sagey green I have over here. I don't know if you can see that, but I don't want to knock over my water. I'm using this one down here. And I'm just going to load up my brush, load up my brush, the liner brush, and I make it nice and thin. And I'm going to do the bud first because I like a little bit of green on the bud. It kind of, just like it's still attached, I like to give a little bit of something for it to sit on, something for the bud to sit on. Now, I like to go up. But I want it to come from the flower, so I'm going to turn my paper upside down because that's how I like to work. It's your paper. You're comfortable. Move it the way you want. And I'm going to make this one come all the way down. Nice, easy. And then this one go all the way down. And then I'm going to take my brush to make leaves. And let me show you the easiest way to make leaves. You're going to start light, heavy, light. So light, heavy, light light heavy light that's an ugly one but that's all right light heavy light light heavy light let's give him a little more shape let's make him not so ugly oh there we go everything is fixable in paint especially watercolor i love watercolor because whatever you uh, want to do you don't have to be exact it doesn't have to be perfect watercolor really should be kind of loose and abstract. And what, to me, the easiest thing to learn is flowers because flowers don't all look the same in nature. In fact, a lot of them look very different than um, from each other. I'm gonna turn that off. Now this is a little dry. I want it to dry a little bit. And as you can see, it dries, it changes. See how they blend it together? 
So you really can't mess up with watercolor. That's why I, I love using watercolor. It's so easy. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit more. But then when I go back in with the same dark, it's where I'm going to put in let me get this one here. Some detail. We're going to do some thin lines if you want. Sometimes I don't do the lines. This one here doesn't have very many, just a few. And then I'm going to go back with a third color when it's really dark. I'm um, sorry, really dry. And I always try to make that as complete opposite as I can because I like it to be like the little, uh, what is that? The stamina and the pistol. I don't I remember all my biology days, uh, but they all kind of have a little bit. Some of them I don't, some I do. Depends on what you like to do. So now I'm going to go with this dark orange again. And this is where I'm going to just, very light lines, add a little define to define the petals. And go as light as you can, just throw it up. Throw it up in the air. Right here, nice and easy. And sometimes I like to get the middle a little bit more of the orange or more of the color that I'm using. Kind of fill it in a little bit. This is your flower. If you don't want to make them uh, detailed, you just like the water abstract. Again, sometimes I do do that. This is your painting. Do what you want. To me, watercolor is just a way of uh, distracting your mind. I, I think that when you're focused on not just watercolor, but any art, it kind of takes you someplace else. And then you're not really thinking about anything but the watercolor. And again, I like to fill in the center a little bit. This one could use a little bit more wispies, a little bit more color. Looks a little bit better. And then for the little bud, I like to put a little bit more color as well. I'm just going to let that dry a little bit more. Oh, he looks like he could use more water. If you feel like it's too dark and heavy, add a little bit more water. Look at that. Float it right back out. Float it right back out. And then we're going to go with our brown. It's getting to be a little dry. So I'm going to take my uh, this brown color I have because I like brown and orange together. When I, I you actually use the brown for a lot of them. I don't know why I just tend to. But if you're using a pink flower or a purple flower, you can use a dark pink. But I'm going to use a flower, uh, the uh, brown. And I'm just going to put a couple little dots here and there. Barely touching the page. Now that it's dry, it's not going to spread all over. So it's just going to lay on top. Let me make sure the sides, I think that's pretty dry, yeah. I usually take, do them and then come back a little later, but we're all tea Tuesday here, so let's just get them all underway, right? And that's all I do. Now, when this dries, it's actually going to look a lot different. I don't know why it always looks a lot different. So here's what I did earlier of the same flowers. See how they start to dry, they melt into each other. Oh, and we also must forgot to sign it. Always sign your work. You always see me do that on all my ornaments that I paint. I like to put a little SW. And then, like I said, if you want to, you can even frame them. I'll put my little frame. This is some splatters. That's another technique you can do if you want to. You can wet your brush any odd color. See here, this was a, a purple flower, so I took yellow, something totally different. And I just wet it, and then I just bang on it to splash it around. I don't want to do that yet because this isn't 100% dry. So, oh, this one's dry. Let me do that on this one. Let's pick a nice color. Let's pick a, let's pick this super bright green. I'm just going to get it loaded up on my brush. Loaded up on my brush with a lot of water and a lot of paint. See that? And then you just, let me move this out of my way. And you just tap it. And now you look like you're an abstract artist with crazy art like that one. And then when that dries, it'll dry lighter. See how it dries lighter and it looks super cute. I like that look. But if you don't, don't do that. So I hope you have fun with watercolor. I, I like to take it and like I said, play with it. Take a bunch of color, make dots on a page. Just push color around and you'll see the difference in how it flows. How when two colors get together and they make a third color. If you remember color theory from college or from high school, I remember doing color, the color wheel. It, it'll be a lot of fun to see how they blend and mix and then how they look different when they're dry. Again, they look so, to me, they look so different once they're dry. And if you're making a painting and you're not crazy about how it's turning out, walk away. Walk away, pretend like you, you're done. And then when you come back, you'll see with a fresh set of eyes and it will look different. Uh, it'll look, um, what the, the colors are dry, they dry lighter, uh, they'll blend together and they still continue to move. 
like as this dries, this might even get more darker into the lines because it's still continuing to spread. So I hope you uh, try it out. And again, you don't need any fancy products. Uh, you can use regular, any old brand of water car. You can buy fancy water cars, but you don't need to to start. Get the inexpensive stuff just to get yourself and try it out. And it was nice to have a Tuesday with you again. I'm going to finish up my coffee and then I'm going to head out to work. Hope you all have a good day. Mm -hmm.